Hi folks and welcome to the online ministry of First Assembly of God located at 407 Fort Street in my hometown, Minden, Louisiana. Roll, tide, roll and go Apaches. Thank you for joining us for this brief devotion and it is our hope that whenever you read this and listen to it, that God the Holy Ghost will come to you and be beside you and speak to you and quicken this word to you and make it come alive and encourage you. As, uh, as we look to God's wonderful word, he will do that. And I thank the Lord for it that he does. Listen, let's start off with prayer. Father, we love you and praise you and thank you, God, for your goodness and mercy and grace to us. Lord, you have, have given us mercy Lord, you have not given us what we deserve, which is punishment, but you've given us mercy. And if that were not enough, Lord, you went beyond that and gave us grace and truth in the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, that not only have you uh, pardoned us, but you've also chosen to abundantly bless us in Christ. We thank you for the right standing that we have in your eyes because we have Jesus as our Savior and our Lord and our source, our only source of righteousness and right standing in your, in your sight. Lord, bless us now as we study your wonderful word. I pray, God, that you'd quicken it to us, make it come alive to us, and cause it to be applicable to our lives today. Because, yes, Lord, this is a true historical record of what went on with the Apostle Paul at this point in the ministry that you'd called him to. But, Lord, also, there are truths in here that will apply to our lives today. Make us the better for it, Lord. Let us see them, realize them in the good Holy Ghost, and apply them to our lives. In Jesus' almighty name, amen and amen. We pick up a, a place in Paul's life where he has been imprisoned. He is under protective custody of the Romans, uh, where he's actually in a courtroom, uh, actually, and he, he's, uh, he's about to give his defense. He's been charged by uh, Jews and who hired a, a notable Jewish lawyer named Tertullus, uh, of that day. And now it is about to be time, uh, Paul's time to give his defense. And here's where we start in the, the book of Acts uh, chapter 24 and verse 10. And we'll be in the NLT until we get to our final scripture today. The governor then motioned for Paul to speak. And Paul said, I know, sir, that you have been a judge of Jewish affairs for many years, so I gladly present my defense before you. Folks, God will give us opportunities to speak. I realize, and you do too, of course, that this is Paul's defense. He's in, he's in a court. He's been charged uh, w with breaking the law, the Jewish law. But here's the great part. God is going to use that as a platform for him to speak and give his testimony. Many times we're not at church, but we will be given opportunities at work, at play, recreation, uh, doctor's office, shopping, wherever. But we will be given a platform and an opportunity to share the word of God, to be salt and light to the lost and iron it sharpens iron to the saved. And folks, we should take at full advantage of those opportunities. Every time we leave home, we need to pray and say, God, give me opportunity to speak about the wonders of Christ and the grace that God has given us in Jesus and share that with, let me see those open doors. And folks, that's what Paul is doing right here. You would think he's in a courtroom. He wouldn't have anything uh, spiritually uh, speaking of importance to say, but this is the very platform God has given him. Let us take note of that and let us be quick to seize those opportunities in our lives. Next scripture is verse 11. He says, you can quickly discover that I arrived in Jerusalem no more than 12 days ago to worship at the temple. He's telling the man what he came to do, where he was at, that he hadn't been there long. He hadn't stirred up a lot of trouble, but they claim that he has. Our next scripture says this in verse 12. My accusers never did find me arguing with anyone in the temple, nor stirring up a riot in any synagogue or on the streets of the city. 
Folks, I've said this before and I'll say it again. When the devil brings you a charge against you, make sure it's a lie. Paul was charged with disruption, uh, with uh, uncivilized behavior according to the law and a breaking of the law. And he's telling them, you know what? Everything they're saying against me is a lie. Let us be so let us be just like this when we get charged with doing, because they're the accusers everywhere. The, the devil's going to anoint people to accuse you. You can just count on it. But you know what? We robe ourselves with the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and with the truth that he has given us and the truth that we live. He says this, these men cannot possibly prove the things they accuse me of doing. But I admit that I follow the way. Look at this. I love it when, uh, when the Bible calls uh, uh, Christianity the way. It is a way of life. It is a way of heaven. It is a way to live, a way to go to heaven when we pass from this life to the next life, to the better life and the greater life. But I admit that I follow the way which they call a cult. I worship the God of our ancestors and I firmly believe the Jewish law and everything written in the prophets. Now he's fixing to get into the pharisaical uh, understanding of the word of the law back then. He says, I have the same hope in God that these men have. I can see him gesturing at them. That God will raise both the righteous and the unrighteous. See, the Sadducees said there was no, no angels, no resurrection of the dead or any of that stuff. So now then, he's saying who he is, what he is, and what he believes. Our next scripture says this, because of this, because I am going, I believe I am going to stand at the judgment bar of God to be judged of how I live my life on this earth. He says, because of this, I always try to maintain a clear conscience before God and all people. Listen, folks, this is a good thing to apply to our lives today. Because of this, what? Because we're going to stand before the Lord. We live in the most wonderful nation, I think, on the planet. It's the wonderful United States of America. It's wonderful America, we call it. And folks, we have a lot of freedoms and liberties. But the fact that we have the liberty and freedom to sin doesn't mean we should choose to sin. We have more. Here's the problem. We seem to have more uh, freedom than we do morality. We have more liberty than we do morality. And our freedom should always be governed by our, our morality, not the other way around. If it's not against the law, will you get to do it? No, that's not the Bible. And you know what? Paul says, because I know I'm going to stand in judgment. And we should say the same thing because we know we're going to stand in judgment. We should try. We should strive to maintain a clear conscience before God and all people. I like this one verse 16. I like it in the King James Version. Let me show it to you. And herein do I exercise myself. What is exercise to you? Exercise to me is intentionally spending energy towards a certain goal. Whether you want to want to get stronger, you want to get healthier, you want to want to get uh, get your your blood pressure down and your your uh, respiratory efficiency up. Hey, those are two things that usually go together. You want to lose a little weight. Hey, all those things that go it. They're a package deal. They bundle them. God saw fit to bundle them for our physical well-being. But he says, herein do I exercise myself. Do I spend my energy to always have a conscience void of offense towards God and towards man? You can't be pleasing and, and, and right in God's eyes unless you're also, unless you're also not only doing what he tells you to, but being right towards what he tells you towards men. Listen, we have this relationship and we have this relationship. We can't have one or the other. They're both together. It's both the upright and the horizontal on the cross, folks. He said, herein do I exercise. This is, are we doing this? It, are, are we spending our energy that as we live our life to always have a conscience void 
of offense towards God? Are we doing what God wants us to do? Are we pleasing to him and towards men? There are some people that think, well, if I please God, it doesn't matter about mankind. Listen, when you look at the big 10, I'm referring to the big, big, the big 10, the 10 commandments. I want you to know some of them are towards our relationship towards God, but some of them also cover in the same big 10. It covers our relationship with others. God, God cares about it, cares about how we live with others and how we live towards him. Isn't that the, the revised New Testament Ten Commandments all rolled into two? When they asked Jesus, what, what, did it, what do we mean? What are we supposed to do about the commandments, the law and all of that? And he said, love the Lord your God with all that's within you and your neighbor is yourself. And then they went on and asked him, who's my neighbor? Well, our neighbor is everybody. It's not just the people on either side of your dwelling. So let us, let us exercise ourselves. Let us spend energy towards having a conscience that daily we are void of offense of offending God and void of offending mankind. God bless you folks. Dwell on that and chew on that. That's a good something to chew on, I think. I hope you have a spectacular rest of your week whenever you choose to listen to this. God bless you and keep you. Hey, you are invited to in-person services here at First Assembly. We start at 9.30, listen to me, 9.30, early bird gets the worm, 9.30 on Sunday morning and 6.30 on Wednesday nights. God bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>